I think it was quite clear that in terms of the, the speed of their response, the openness and transparency uh, of the information that was provided uh, even before and also certainly to the WHO um, mission, uh, they have been excellent. Now clearly uh, this is still very early in the outbreak. We are just only four weeks or so after the virus was, has been recognized and there's a lot that has to be done. There's a lot that has been done, but it's a, it's a huge road ahead. Just, just Give us a sense of, you, you, I mean, you have dealt with SARS, you dealt with the bird flu outbreak of about 10 years ago as well. Give us a sense of just how worried you are at the moment about the potential for this to become a very, very big um, you know, outbreak. Yes, yeah, so whenever uh, animal virus jumps to humans, it, it is always a cause for concern. Um, now, in this particular case, uh, it seems that this particular avian virus is infecting humans more easily than other avian viruses that we know to up to now, including H5N1. So I think that certainly is a cause for concern. At the moment, there is no evidence of sustained human-to-human -human transmission. That is really what will make the quantum jump between uh, a limited problem and a huge problem. And, and, and in the evolution of a virus, is it more or less likely for that to happen sometime in the future? Well, I mean, one has to take into account the fact that this virus is crossing more easily to humans than before as a cause for concern. Now, it doesn't mean that it's inevitable that this virus is going to make the final step and become human transmissible. If you look at the uh, comparisons with the H1N1 you mentioned before, which was an outbreak, uh, 370 people died there. The mortality rate, though, the, the, the people who died compared with the number of people who got it was high, 60 percent. We've been hearing from the WHO that this strain is also being labelled as, as very dangerous. So if you're comparing the two, which one would you say is more dangerous? When you talk about mortality rates, it's quite difficult to give numbers like that because what we don't know is the iceberg under the water. In other words, the number of cases that are mild that are not being recognized. Now that is certainly the true, uh, that is certainly true with this, in this situation as well. There are investigations to try to ascertain that, but I think it's difficult to necessarily, you know, compare uh, case fatality rates in this manner. I think what is more concerning is the fact that this virus is repeatedly crossing to humans with fair ease, but still not transmitting from human to human. What precautions should people who live in this region, who people who visit this region now be taking? Well, clearly the exposure to poultry, uh, and in particular to live poultry markets, uh, has been identified from a number of uh, lines of evidence. Um, so I think uh, when visiting such uh, situations, when you're exposed to poultry, you certainly need to take basic hygienic precautions such as uh, washing your hands or, or, or using some form of uh, alcohol hand rub. Um, and obviously if anyone develops fever, mm -hmm. cough... Eating chicken's all right. Eating cooked chicken is fine. Oh, ch cooking will completely kill the virus. Yeah, so yeah, well-cooked yeah. food is, is safe. And basic hygiene procedures, washing hands, keeping, keeping things disinfected. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and as far as live poultry markets are concerned, uh, are you comfortable that there still should be a trade in live poultry? Well, I mean, I think what is most dramatic is the impact of shutting the live poultry markets in Shanghai. Following that event, essentially, new human cases have, uh, have stopped appearing. So I think that's the strongest evidence to show that interventions in these live poultry markets do have an effect on mm -hmm. this type of uh, outbreak.